Brett Davison with you through until six. And let's now return to a story that's not going away. Fracking high on the news agenda again this Tuesday. And today, a government commission report from a panel of experts has recommended that the process of gas extraction, which triggered two minor earthquakes near Blackpool last year, should be allowed to resume. Hydraulic fracturing, or fracking, which uses high-pressure water and chemicals to release natural shale gas, has been on hold since the government appointed the experts to investigate. Well, John Bailey is a local resident in Poultner Fylde, who is against the plans to drill for shale gas. He's been speaking with BBC Radio Lancashire's Claire Hamilton, and he gave her his reaction to the report's findings. Well, firstly, the outcome of the report isn't surprising at all, but obviously it's disappointing, and I think... Through it all, they're just singing the same old song, and that song begins with the word if, it seems, because it's all about if there is appropriate monitoring, if it m causes major earthquakes. This was a really alarming statement this morning by one of the specialists. If it causes major earthquakes, they will stop. It really is. The whole process and everything surrounding it is just so unpredictable. There have been assurances from qualified members of the British Geographical Society that it's very unlikely that anything more than very minor yeah. earthquakes yeah. Would, would actually take place. Yeah. Does that not reassure you anyway? Not in the slightest, no. I mean, they are saying that it's uh, unlikely that any further earth tremors may be caused. I, I presume it was unlikely that any of the previous earthquakes were likely to happen. They happened. It really is such an unpredictable process, this. It's something that everybody really should be coming increasingly aware of the dangers environmentally and, and other respects that are, could be a consequence of this process. We also heard from Mark Miller earlier today from Quadrilla and um, he said they're looking at actually implementing a traffic light system that allows um, them to monitor seismology and halt any work before a tremor was to take place. There is obviously some suggestion that safety measures are being put into place. Well, yeah, Mr Miller has made that comment before, this traffic light system, which, which is as alarming as most of these other statements that come out, both of Quadrilla and, and the other specialists. Um, the idea of a traffic light system whereby you're, you're actually carrying out the fracking process and a tremor starts and, and it might get worse and so it's a case of, oh well, yeah, we'd better turn the thing off. I'm afraid Mother Nature is rather more unpredictable and self-opinionated in the way that she conducts herself. Here we have a system that actually has been proved to create these earthquakes and I can't see a traffic light system being of any reassurance to the public whatsoever. This report generally tended to focus on tremors. Are there other concerns you think regarding fracking? There are many other aspects uh, relating to the fracking issue in addition to the prospect of tremors uh, and one of those is, is water pollution and the sheer amount of water that's used and what happens to the polluted water when it's disposed of. Uh, if these plans go ahead, there will be up to 800 wells in an area from Lancaster to Southport and Blackpool to the Boland Fells, and they will be taking mil millions, if not billions, of gallons of water, over half of which remains under the Earth's surface. And then what comes back to the surface has to be disposed of, and that is polluted, and it's potentially radioactive. It's going to cause a great stress on the uh, already uh, stressed-out um, road system, with tankers carrying this hazardous liquid, etc. It is likely, as you say, there will be a lot of activity if this does go ahead. It will also potentially bring in quite a bit of business and create, they've said, 5,600 jobs, a third of those from, from Lancashire. Can you see there being any benefits to fracking coming to the county? I don't think anybody can dispute that anything that brings increased employment, prosperity and potentially independence of energy is a good thing. But I think you do have to measure the downside and the consequences of it. And I think these potential costs, these potential risks are far too high a price to pay. It's the unpredictability of all this that nobody can forecast. The whole system behind all this, the whole procedural and planning system, legislative system, is at fault as well. And I think also it's quite wrong that whilst all these continuing investigations are taking place, that Quadrilla are now allowed to conduct this geophysical survey across the whole area. There's cables all over the roads uh, and the fields, and they're carrying out this geophysical survey. They're advertising for employment, etc. 
What would you like to see happen now, moving forward? The whole thing should be stopped, period. We were fighting for a moratorium on all this until all the potential risks can be ironed out, but I don't think that will ever happen because the risks can't be ironed out. What happens two miles beneath the Earth's surface is, is totally unpredictable, no matter how many of these surveys uh, are conducted. And the whole monitoring of this, how on Earth is the Environment Agency and other agencies going to monitor up to 800 wellheads in this area. They just haven't got the capacity, the facilities or the wherewithal to do that and it really does need to be monitored on a day-to-day -day basis. Our reporter Claire Hamilton there speaking with uh, Pontlefile resident John Bailey on fracking. Much more on this to come between now and six o'clock here on BBC Radio Lancashire. Radio Lancashire so, to our top story, the controversial process of fracking has been given the green light to be resumed on the Fylde coast. A report by scientists and engineers says the process for drilling for gas on the Fylde should be allowed to resume, but under strict guidelines. Drilling was stopped last year following two minor earthquakes. The company wanting to carry out the drilling is Quadrilla Resources. Our reporter at Colin Sykes has been speaking to their chief executive, Mark Miller. Well, I think the report really lays out a very safe and sensible way to go forward with hydraulic fracturing. The recommendations in it uh, really provide a way to mitigate against future seismicity. We're going to be monitoring at very low levels of seismicity uh, and, and really our goal is to, to, to work at levels that are below what can even be felt. I think that the measures that they're talking about really are very affordable. It's not going to change the cost significantly. Once we install the system, uh, it'll, it'll be affordable to proceed. We have to wait uh, for the period of consultation, which as I understand is about six weeks. And then the, the deck, I would assume, would take uh, two to three weeks to go ahead and process that information. And from the time that they would say go, assuming they say that uh, they give the green light, we would expect 30 to 60 days from that point before we would, we would start. I mean, one of the advantages of this report, it wasn't your report, was it? It's an independent report, and they, they, people are more likely to to accept the findings of something like that. Well, I think it's always important when you can have independent consultants go ahead and, and arrive at the same conclusions that, uh, that we have previously. So, yes, I think it gives it credibility. Uh, what about the problem of uh, the radioactive water at the pre site? Well, right now, the, the, the water that's over there now is water that we had requested the EA would let us retain there to do testing on it. So uh, it, it had a permit to dispose of it, and, and, and last fall we requested to keep a small volume there for testing. So eventually when our testing program is done, then we'll have that removed. Well, this is the last phase of our testing program and our exploration program, but I, I would say that we're very optimistic. We know there's a very enormous amount of gas in place down there, and this last phase of the exploration program is really to determine how much we could get out at a commercial rate. So very optimistic, but we'll know later this fall and make an announcement at that point. And you're still having problems convincing people, aren't you, locally, that it's, it's safe. How do you get over that? I think, I think it's just working, getting our message out, addressing the different issues. As I said, this report addresses seismicity. There's another one to address fracture growth and, and, and water disposal. But we continue working to get our messages out there, and I think that uh, you know, people are following those and, and uh, you know, slowly gaining some confidence in the operation. Just remind me about the potential of what, what you found here. Uh, how much gas are we talking about? Well, the, the amount of gas in place that we refer to as the resource is 200 TCF. That's about 50 to 60 times larger than what the nation uses in a year. Now, that doesn't refer to recoverable, and that's what we're really going to do with this next pro part of the exploration process is determine what percent of that would come out of the ground. So, so what, do you, what do you guess? It's too early, to, <laughs> too early to talk, but uh, in, in typical shale plays around the world, you, you get numbers like 20% recoverability, and that's 20% of, of what each well encounters. So there's some mathematics to be done yet, but uh, hopefully later this year we'll know that, that answer. It, from speaking to you before, it sounds like you've not been helped by what uh, some other operators have done in the States and, and elsewhere in convincing people this is safe. Well, there, there, there's certainly some, some issues that took place over there, but they're, they're rare. As a percent of the industry over there, it's a very small amount of, of, of problems, but they make the, the headlines, and, and of course we have to account for answering those issues over here. But the way we're designing here, and we, we've always maintained this, this answer really, is that we're concentrating on the right way to do it here, and we're really not a spokesman for some of the operators in the U.S. industry. But overall, it can be done safe, and that's our top priority. Okay, so you've had a you've had a lift with it, this report today. Um, when do you see? When do you think 
we might see gas coming out of the ground in, in Lancashire? Well, again, if we were to decide by, by this fall that we, we could go ahead and go forward with it, there would probably be a period of, of uh, 12 to 18 months, really, to get to where, where we would drill our first producing well. Uh, possibly even longer, but that, I would say with uh, by by late 2013 or early 2014. And how many wells do you think we we might be talking about? Uh, it's too early to tell, but uh, we've given numbers in the range of 400 to 800 as a starting point. But there again, we have to carry out this part of the program to see how much gas an individual well recovers before we could put a number to how many wells would be needed. Chief Executive of Quadrilla Resources, Mark Miller there. Uh, but today's report hasn't been uh, welcomed, or indeed has convinced everyone. Opposition remains strong. Eve M- N- McNamara from the group Ribble Estuary Against Fracking gave me her reaction to the latest announcement a little earlier this afternoon. Well, I'm not surprised, actually, because... Um Quadrilla, when the seismic activity did happen, uh, Quadrilla ceased uh, drilling and um, commissioned this report and said that they would basically reduce pressure in the well and monitor more closely the seismic um, activity. And this deck report basically says the same thing, to do that. So they're only doing what I had expected anyway. And they've given the green light to it. Um, but it's not the only issue. It's not just the... Um, seismic activity it's all the other issues that surround this industry as well that um we have concerns well maybe if you rehearse those arguments again because this is not a new story and it seems okay it's been quadrilla like you said took the lead on this Uh, they eased off and now it's been given the green lights and it's almost as if oh and there's something else and there's something else what would it do to to convince you well i would prefer a, a more stringent um um uh regulation um, the statutory framework of, that we've got at the moment, the regulation framework we've got, isn't sufficient to cover the scaling up of drilling operations. So if they're not going to visit individual wells, how are they going to regulate them? So you want national policy to change yes, yes. because of an incident on a wire? I want, and uh, we would like uh, regulations to be tightened up and to be s- this industry specific. But you would never be appeased because they, these rules have been in place and now uh, they've satisfied the criteria. It's no different than mining, we've been told. No, it is different from mining. Um, this um, is, uh, is uh, shell, uh, shell gas extraction is, is new because of the technologies. Um, fracking has been going on for many years, since the 40s and 50s um, in America, and um, it's not a new system i agree with that but this um to try and get shell gas out of impermeable rock is very invasive and it's uh, it's takes in a vast amount of water vast amounts of chemicals and there's uh, possibilities of gas migration um well casings um failing the the problem is um the um with 800 the top range scenarios 800 wells they've got to be regulated. And I don't think that the current statutory regulation framework that we have um, is sufficient um, to regulate. And yet we need this gas. We consume gas as Mm. as we used to consume Mm. coal. Well, there's an argument as to how much in reserves are down there. I mean, they quoted uh, 200 trillion cubic uh, uh, feet of gas um, there, of which um, 10% um, possibly is extractable and, and commercially used. But in many ways, but, that's, that's their hard cheese, isn't it? Because yeah, it's but the, they're in it for profit. But there's an argument as to how long this gas will last. I mean, they've got wells in America that have been disused after five years. So it's not decades. I don't believe it's decades and decades of gas there. That would be music to your ears if it was only for two or three years, wouldn't it? Yeah, but the environmental damage that it may cause, because it's not just, as I said, it's not just the sheer volumes of water. To extract this gas, you have to um what they call stimulate the shell gas layer and that's frack it and break it open to release the gas it's not in gas pockets it's actually part of the shell gas and that's what could cause seismic consequences literally yeah so be honest it's just a bit nimby this isn't it it's like i'm happy to use gas but please don't spoil my view no it's not it's not that at all because um this distracts from renewable energies. This is a short, I believe this is a short-term solution. As I said, there's arguments. The British Geological Survey originally stated there's only 18 months worth of shell gas there. I don't know if those figures have changed since. But this is um, a short-term solution. And the cost is too high, I think. Better regulated if you if there were new roads built and if it was guaranteed uh, that actually it would be up and running for a generation for 30 years, then you'd be happy. 
No, actually, I don't think I would be because I just don't think this is a viable source of energy. This is a finite source of energy. And but so I think, is coal. Yeah. W well, coal is so a fossil fuel. So are all fuel. the fossil fuels. Yeah, exactly. And we should be moving away from fossil fuels. Well, that is a different argument because mm. we're not, no. are we? But, we? but that is what we should be doing. We should be moving away from fossil fuels and concentrating on energies that are cleaner. And it sounds like a lot of jobs for the area. That's good, isn't it? Well, a lot of the jobs are highly technical. Skilled workers, even Skilled better. Worker. But a lot of the jobs are highly technical, and you find that a lot of the jobs um, are brought in from outside. To, it's like a travelling circus. It would, of course, stimulate yeah. the local economy, this, uh, this, the scale of it. But for mentioned. how long? Because I don't believe this is a long-term solution. I believe this is a very short-term solution. The thoughts of Eve McNamara uh, from the group The Ribble Estuary Against Fracking, uh, speaking to me a little earlier uh, after it's uh, been announced today that drilling has been given the green light to be resumed on the Filed Coast. Your thoughts are well.